to have a death in the family. The idea of family is close to the heart of the Mormon religion. Live a good life here on earth, they believe, without sin, and you will be reunited later with your family in heaven. Joseph and Pauline Pace have been missionaries for their church. She's active in charities. He's been a successful businessman and is the former mayor of San Jose, California, where they raised a family of seven children and 35 grandchildren. From a standpoint of, of patient acceptance. Joe Pace is acceptance. also a physician. It's total. When I talked with Malcolm, we talked about his ability to be able to control what period of time he had left. Right. His son Malcolm is dying of AIDS. The best scenario for Malcolm is that he goes into the natural sleep by the end of the week and then by the middle of the following week he will take his last breath and be back with our Heavenly Father. They say I should be going unconscious in about oh, four or five days and then death will follow. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it, quite frankly. You're tired? I'm tired. I'm tired of being in hospital rooms. And, uh, but I needed this time from when I came to Salt Lake. I needed that time to basically tie up, tie up loose ends. For Malcolm, the loose ends began in the family. He was born 39 years ago, the fourth of seven children, the youngest son of a strong and sometimes disapproving father. He's always been a very kind, nice, obliging son. But as far as meeting the goals that I had as his father, there were some problems there. He started to do some drinking and then he stopped going to church, and the other boys had not done the things that way. But it was more complicated than that. His closest sister is Nikki. Well, when Malcolm came back from UCLA, he was so torn. Just he developed rapports and relationship with men that he couldn't with women. He felt secure and safe with them. And he kept trying to deny what he was feeling and said, well, something must be wrong. I just have to get my head together. And finally, after he started lo into law school, he finally said, I'm not going to fight this anymore. And he finally started to practice a lifestyle of um, homosexuality. In the Mormon religion, homosexuality is one of the gravest of sins. And I kept blaming myself. I didn't know for what, but uh, had I been too protective a mother, or too close a mother, or too, name it, had I done it, was it my fault? I thought he was mistaken. I was 100% positive he was wrong. It couldn't be. Not, not Malcolm. I was totally blind. Not my son. Not my son. Malcolm lived a life apart in San Jose. He was a lawyer and an athlete. He traveled widely, and he had a close circle of friends. Malcolm's group of friends have been a tremendous asset and support to him. They've helped him weather through stuff that probably we as an other family could not have done. Nikki saw it one way. Dad looked at it differently. I felt that he was going to get AIDS. I really did. Because I was around, as I said, as a doctor, and in the community as far as that aspect of our of San Jose was concerned and the San Francisco being so close by in the bathhouses there was a bathhouse down the street about eight blocks away and uh, every time I'd drive down there go downtown I could I would look to see if my son's car was there 
I'd sometimes drive down at night to see if his, if his car was at a bathhouse. Now, this is a, probably graphically gives you some answers to how did I feel about this. So I didn't feel very good. Eighteen months after he was diagnosed with AIDS, Malcolm, who was now living and working in Nevada, became very ill. Then he had an unexpected reprieve. My brother was supposed to die about a month ago. We went down to Reno, and the doctor said he is pre-terminal. That is the, the classification on his chart. He will be dying very shortly. I've got in tonight. We made contacts with family, with friends, to prepare them that we'd be having a funeral shortly. And lo and behold, you know, when you always say, gosh, if we could only have a miracle, if we could have something happen so he doesn't die, well, we got it. And that's what we've done for these last three weeks, is we've played out this miracle. Playing out the miracle meant bringing Malcolm back to Salt Lake City to grapple with all the emotions that had separated the family for so long. You know, I love you guys. Don't ever forget it. We're together as a unit. I know. He wanted to come home. His friends understood. There were two pictures hanging in Malcolm's hospital room. One, his family of friends in California who loved him and with whom he shared the last years of his life. The other, of the family into which he was born. The family he so wanted to please but which he felt he had somehow let down. I didn't want a family. I, my lifestyle was somewhat repugnant to my parents at that time. But he had fought for their approval again and again, in his work and as a son. They're tied together in our family. This, you can't separate them that easily. So, and yes, as a, as a son, yes, I wanted approval but also in a business setting, yes, I wanted approval. Anybody in particular of the family? The whole family, probably my father, my father in particular. Why, do you know? Um, you know yeah, you're, you're okay. still talking. It's okay. Um, they've had a lot of difficulties, and one of them being that we came, come from a family of high strivers. Um, this is sort of inbred in us as we were young that you always would try to strive for the most and Malcolm was able to get a law degree a, a master's in law degree in taxation and different things and he ended up in the last couple of years working for my father and in it there have been some difficult times and Malcolm always wanted his approval that he could be one of those successful members of the family you know, when I asked him what is the most important thing for him, what do you, what do you think he said? You ask him what's the most important yeah. thing? we talked about family. I think he would probably say uh, that love of the family and of, the, of his brothers and sisters. No, he said his father's approval. His father's approval. See, this, this shows the burden that he's been under all this time. I, I don't try to wiggle out of that. That's, that's, that's very interesting. Now, uh, playing the record back, father's approval. You can imagine how it'd be to live all that time not feeling you had your father's approval. I've known that for, uh, off and on for times, that he was fighting to get my approval. And it brings tears to his mother because she knew there were periods of time when I was not fair with him. And, and, uh, oh, this comments are very interesting. Very, I'm sure very appropriate. And a challenge to, to myself to be better. I, I certainly have had fa some failures in this life thus far.
I get to sleep. Get to sleep. Yeah. He did search for my approval for years and years and years. I'm still getting your mail. And I didn't give it to him. And uh, sorting things out. Take That's the care. way it was. I'm not saying it was right. I did the best I could. And sometimes it wasn't very good. Everything in the way that you'd like to have it done, okay? Yeah. I love my son, I love my religious beliefs, they don't mix. That's called a conflict when there's no logical solution for your problem. And that's what I've had for many years now, a disaster. I firmly believe in the precepts of my religion but he was my son, is my son, always will be my son. I'm not going to pretend that I rediscovered uh, the Mormon church. But what, I, what I am, what, what I finally have relented is to accept the fact that there is a God and it may, be, it may be a Mormon God, it may be a Catholic God, it may be a Jewish God, who knows. But I, uh, I uh, am, am willing to accept that there is a higher, higher deity, and that, that's, that's what I'm accepting. Day by day, they were growing closer. It was a time for my father and mother to be able to really have their son in their arms. I mean, they went through all the trauma, thinking they did something wrong. They we had time to talk about a lot of personal things, a lot of subjects that were really special. And but now that in the last couple of years, they've really come to grips of accepting you as you are, and not right. and, and not trying to worry about it's changing. Gone full circle. Thank you for everything you've done, Nikki. Okay. You remember the promise you made me? Not really. You'd meet me? No, where? At the end of the tunnel later? Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. there. Okay. It was the last afternoon of Malcolm's life, though no one knew it at the time. As usual, the family came and went. Nikki was there. So was her younger sister, Shauna, and Shauna's husband, Dee. Dad, come back, okay? Just, Sean and I are here with you, like we've always been, been with you, okay? Just go. Uh, uh, you go. Uh, you waiting for Dad to get here? In the late afternoon, his mother came back. They waited, but Malcolm hung on. It was Friday night. Malcolm was fading fast, and we kept saying, Malcolm, let go. Go on. And as much as we tried to coax Malcolm into leaving, Malcolm would not leave this mortal existence without my father there at his side. My father was there less than a minute and a half, and Malcolm finally said, enough's enough, and he passed from this world. And Dad, as the best tribute, with all that has been said and done, the bottom line is, he loved you and wanted 
to respect and knew at the end that he had it. The pallbearers were Malcolm's friends from California. His father wanted them there. I feel comfortable about Malcolm. I feel comfortable. Maybe I should have figured it out long ago. Oh God, our eternal Father, we come together this bright, sunny, wintry day. Two days We're before the funeral, his father changed the wording of the obituary. From Malcolm Pace died of cancer to Malcolm Pace died of AIDS. Son and friend, Malcolm Edward Pace.